Well, as, if you, as you've just heard, four very different interpretations of the brief. And I'd just like to hear from, from each of you if you could tell me, you know, your first um, reaction to being told what the commission, the subject the commission was, and, and how you went about deciding um, what you were going to write. And could you start off? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember, actually, what, um, what, how it, it came about. I mean, I think I was quite excited by the idea of doing it. Um, maybe I, I'm not a great traveller, so I suppose it, maybe it's easier for me to pick a destination in something that's elsewhere from uh, Scotland. Um, and I think the idea of taking characters that I've already knew and taking them somewhere else, it was, yeah, it was... I suppose that was really it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's exciting and very flattering to get the commission. Um, and then the, the terrifying part is actually having to come up with an idea and write the story. Um, but I think, I mean, I think it's a very clever kind of theme for a collection because, it, you know, it's a great through line, but also the, um, the theme is wide open. I mean, all the stories that, you know, you heard tonight were completely different. So it's an amazing way of bringing people from different places together and getting them to kind of think out of the box, I suppose, and talk about somewhere that's not their own their own kind of habitat. Um, well, I, I, was, I was delighted because I'd, I'd had an idea for a story for a, a long time and to get the commission that actually fitted it and to realise I was going to be paid to make it come <laughs> it was, was really exciting. Um, I, I, I actually, I, I was writing about um, the sort of very fragmented ideas of national identity in the, in the former Yugoslavia and I tried for ages after I got this commission to try and write it from the point of view of somebody who lived there and it just felt like too vast a subject so I had to go back to a Scottish protagonist and, in order to try and say what I wanted to, I think. Um, I find it quite hard to write about, um, about a given subject, you know, if I'm given a task I have to write about that, but I do keep notes all over the place. Uh, actually I actually have a file on my computer called Zombie Stories, and they're not uh, stories about zombies. They are stories that are themselves zombies. They, it's like a full story without arms that sort of wanders around. Or I've got one without legs, or some are just torsos that bump into things. And There's a head <laughs> that just carries on jabbering away. So I try and like fix them. And so if I get a commission, I go back to this file and, and look at stuff that, that might work. And, uh, and start from there. So I, it gives me the freedom to just write down anything that I think is interesting. And then uh, if there's a project that comes along, be Dr. Frankenstein and just get it to live, you know, but to try and revive it. And sometimes there's a bit of a cut and paste aspect to it, but often I find that um, I, I just end up writing a full new story. But, but it comes from this kernel that I've been keeping somewhere, uh, just a zombie hand. <laughs> yeah. I'm intrigued to know how familiar each of you were with the settings, because they're such particular settings. I mean, did, yeah, I how went, did you been to that place? I learned to scuba dive in the Philippines at Puerto Galera, and, um, and it was an amazing experience. It's a very beautiful country and a very strange country, um, and there's a lot of... Um, what I at first thought was paedophilia going on. Um, old men who, who, who look like Gary Glitter when he got arrested. You know, sort of balding and, and round and very white. And a lot of young, uh, very brown, small women. Uh, and there's a market going on. And, and I didn't understand any of that. And while I'm trying to learn to scuba dive, there's this whole other world that was going on. So, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd been there and I'd... I didn't exactly have this episode of you know happen to me, but I I felt very uncomfortable there, and, and the more I talked to people, the more complicated it became. It wasn't as simple as I as I thought. Yeah. And had you been to yes. somewhere? Yes. Yep. Um, I, I I was uh, in Serbia last year uh, with three other uh, Scottish writers, uh, Sophie Cook, Alan Bissett, and Rog Glass, and there was a it, w it wasn't an academic conference; it was a festival of short stories. Um, and we were there to be talking about Scottishness and <laughs> our identity as Scots. And what just came across to me was how secure, 
you know, we, I mean, we were there and talking about the, 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 the struggle to be different from English and English literature to people who, it, it transpired, couldn't even feel that they owned their own sense of national identity yet because it had been in flux so recently. And it just felt so huge and what we were doing over there so tiny. So I tried to take that out on an idiot protagonist a little bit. She because. is very culturally unaware, yes. your protagonist. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I was trying to make myself feel better for knowing a little bit more than her. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I went to Chicago about 10 years ago. Um, but I think it's always a challenge to try and write about American cities because we, we feel like we're so familiar with them from television. Um, and, and of course there are other sides to Chicago and New York and San Francisco and all these, these places that we think we know, we think we're so familiar with. Um, but it really was seeing Chicago on the night of the, uh, you know, the last um, American election that made me think I'd like to explore a, that as a city where lots of different kind of cultural identities come together. Um, because it, at that time it felt, you know, as though that was the side of America that was winning um, over what had gone before. But um, interesting to have your Scottish uh, protagonist meet a Chilean and that sort of, the, the sort of the bumping up of two cultures with, you know, his rich fam family background and the sort of almost poverty of this, his Scottish uh, family experience. Yeah, I didn't want it to be a kind of straightforward um, kind of culture clash. Um, you know, Scott meets Chilean and, you know, they have sex, but, you know, this is actually the only way that they can communicate is, you know, through the, um, the fact that they both happen to be gay and they have a one-night stand, but they have all sorts of misunderstandings because uh, Tomas, the Chilean character, is a very particular type of Chilean. He's middle class, upper middle class. He is, comes from a big family. They all live together. He has servants. Um, and the Scottish character, I think, his assumptions are challenged by this, I think. 